Well, there's no more exciting time to be a head football coach than going into opening game. Um, you know, you think you have a pretty good pulse on what type of team that you're going to have on the field, but until you get in the middle of the, at least for me, until you get in the middle of the first or second quarter, sometimes you really don't know. Uh, but got a pretty good uh, picture. They've been a remarkable group to work with. I personally probably uh, enjoyed coaching uh, more right now than I ever have. Um, we have a mature football team with a lot of experience. I'm convinced they're emotionally bought in. We have good ability, uh, but our X factor is going to be our chemistry and how we play together and utilizing our strengths. Uh, we certainly have some strengths. You know, we have a, a lot of fifth and sixth years players. Sometimes that can be beneficial. Other times um, it can be a little bit of a liability. I'm convinced it's going to be beneficial for us. Uh, we're strong up the middle. I know we have a couple learned baseball guys in here, but I've always been told if you're strong up the middle, you know, you've got, um, you know, a returning quarterback who we've not had uh, for uh, several years, along with Fia Tua Lona Fono, uh, and those two working together, I think is really helpful. You know, you got a, a blocker on the blind side like Frank Crum, who's really honed and developed his skills, and you know, some other players up front. Over on the defensive side of the football, I think once again we're strong up the middle. Whether it's our defensive tackles, um, and certainly Easton Gibbs having him back running the show, but. Um, you know, Shea Suanoa, I think, has also done some really good things as well in the offseason. And so that and our safeties, uh, Isaac White and Wyatt Eckler, um, are going to provide a lot of stability. Now, we have some other players now that I think are on the edges that can lend some great, great uh, uh, productivity for us. Our tight ends, I think Trayton Wells coming back uh, has really looked good in fall camp. And uh, John Mikes has looked really good as well. And then... Uh, you know, our, we've got some experienced wide receivers uh, with some newer guys over on defense. Colby Taylor has had a really outstanding spring. Uh, Ja'Cory Hawkins has played well. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to keep on rambling here, but probably more players that, that we feel good about than what we've had for quite some time. I know our media uh, people picked the sixth in the league, and that's okay. Uh, but I think we're on pretty solid ground. And then we've got... Uh, an excellent kicker and an excellent punter as well. And so um, we're going to see. We will get tested. Um, this team we're playing against, first of all, Coach McGuire, while I don't know him, he enjoys a great reputation. They really had an outstanding uh, season last year. I do know Coach DeRuder, their defensive coordinator, a veteran player, um, our veteran coach, I should say. And, uh, you know, obviously a great quarterback in Chuck. Uh, he's outstanding. Uh, some receivers, Bradley and Price. And Brooks is a running back. Their offensive line is huge. Uh, over on defense, a defensive tackle, Hudson King is a really good player. Dunlop was an all Big 12 corner. Uh, they handily won their bowl game. Uh, we're facing a really good quality opponent at home. And so it's going to be an exciting test for us. So uh, optimistic, excited, uh, looking forward to how we do. And uh, looking forward to this game. Uh, really encourage our fans to show up. Uh, it'll be a, a prime time uh, showing. As you guys know, typically weather during that time of year is outstanding. I think the kicks are going to be like at 530 on Saturday afternoon. It'll be shown on CBS. And so a big, big stage. So at this time, questions. Yes, Cody. Uh, Craig, Texas Tech went for it on fourth down 52 times yep. last year. Is this going to be one of those deals like against Air Force where you just can't get them mm -hmm. in a third and shorts or, you know, you're going to go for it every time? Well, third and shorts for them is different than certain third and shorts for other people. However, I do want to say they have a very capable running game. Um, well, there's no question, and we've studied that. Uh, we're not completely into analytics. I know I, I listen to Coach McGuire, and they bring in their staff, and they listen to all that. and. Uh, I, I know they did that when they were at Baylor, and there's different um, thoughts on that. Uh, but uh, Jay Savell and I have talked at length about, you know, our defense and pre being prepared. Uh, I doubt uh, that Coach McGuire has the same mentality that Coach Leach had. I can remember calling a defense, and it was fourth and 15. It was on their own 20, and Mike went for it, the old Cody guy. 
if, if, if Coach McGuire wants to do that, okay. Uh, but we are prepared for that. Uh, there's different philosophies, and that's what they have. I can tell you they're, they're, there's, they crunch the numbers. Uh, on the flip side, there's some real, real uh, benefits. If you can get off the field on fourth down, it's a turnover. And, uh, you know, turnover margin in this game, particularly early in the year, is going to have a big, big impact. Yeah. What have you seen from Tyler Shuck on film? Obviously, when he's healthy, they're pretty mm -hmm. much unbeatable. When he's injured, it's, it's tough for him. Yeah. You know what? I think he's outstanding. I mean, you look at his stature. I mean, he's six foot five, a big guy that's got a rocket arm. And, you know, he has a really good understanding of their offense. He plays with great composure. He knows where to take the ball. He's an outstanding player. And when he's hot, it's uh, really, really difficult to defend them. Um, you know, we're in hopes that we can uh, be disruptive, get them to move, uh, cover the receivers. Um, and so um, a great player. And his numbers and his stature back it up. How much, uh, how much of the test is this just for the secondary? Obviously, with so many wide receivers yep. lining up, a lot of them are going to have to play. I mean, right off the bat, how much should we kind of test that group? Uh, our group, wide receivers? Yeah, our group, your secondary. Oh, you know, we're going to get tested, um, you know, and our players recognize that, and Coach Boyd and Coach Savell recognize that. Um, you know, they, they will get tested. Uh, what's going to be important along with that, though, is to supplement uh, that pressure that we can put on them with our front four, and uh, that's an X factor. I mean, if the ball can come out a little bit earlier, if we can dislodge the quarterback and get him off his mark uh, and get some errant throws, uh, but we will get tested in the back end. Um, what is encouraging is uh, Ja'Cory um, played a lot of football last year. Rook played a lot of football. Wyatt played a lot of football. Isaac White played a lot of football. The X Factor is Colby, who played very limited, but thus far has shown some real promise. Uh, but we're going to get tested. The positive thing is, too, it did not take much of a motivating factor to convince those guys they need to get ready to play. They know um, that they're going to get challenged. So Tech's coming a day early, I, I hear. And mm. um, when you were at North Dakota State, did you come a day early when you guys no. were well, uh No. We didn't have the budget to do it, uh, but I can tell you all the years that I was a head coach, there was one time I felt like we ran out of gas. If whoever was covering that game – I think we might have been up by 10 in the fourth quarter, and we had guys that were on the on the sideline. And so, um, yeah, everybody has a different philosophy. It's kind of like us going to Hawaii. Um, uh, but uh, I, I do think altitude makes a difference, and they're 7,200 feet for a reason. Um, so, you know, I, what's also going to be important is for us to stay on the field offensively and to get off the field defensively. Yep, Ryan. They led the uh, Big 12 in sacks last year, obviously. Tyree Wilson is now in the top 10. Pick, yeah, big time player. They, they do, yeah. And, and Coach DeRuiter is really a, a very capable uh, defensive coach. Before he was a head coach at Fresno, you know, he cut his teeth. Uh, he's an Air Force graduate, uh, was down at A&M. I know he's traveled around. They're very aggressive up front, and that poses problems. And so um, we're going to need to protect well. Uh, we're going to need to run the ball well. And, uh, you know, the Big 12 is um, a unique league from a standpoint. It's uh, um, while Tech is physical up front and they, they run the ball, um, you know, that league is built around wide open, put the ball up in the air a bunch. And so you're going to have some sacks. And, you know, that guy, he's a first-round draft choice for a reason. Um, and so I know they've probably got some other guys to replace him. Yes, sir. Tracy. Just curiosity, when you when talk about coming in a day earlier, especially because of the altitude, but over time, how long have you been led to believe that it takes more than a day or two to adjust to the change in altitude? Um, if you talk to doctors, it takes about six weeks. Yeah. So, I, you know, um, I don't know however they want to do it. I, I wasn't even aware of their travel logistics. Cody must know somebody down there. I don't know. Uh, so, um I hope they stay in Wyoming so they can pay more sales tax. I doubt they are. Uh, yes. Um, you mentioned this on you know, national CBS 530 primetime mm -hmm. slot. Um, a lot of eyes are going to be on the program and on this game. Is there any managing the spotlight going on, or is everybody locked in? Um, we're locked in. And the best thing I know is 
Uh, there's an old saying, you dance with who brung you. You better leverage your strengths. Try not to be somebody that you're not. Try to be very authentic. Uh, and, uh, and for our players uh, to, to recognize this as an opportunity to highlight our program. You know, I had a chance to talk to our announcers uh, uh, out in Vegas, and uh, they were excited about doing the game and the platform. We've always appreciated uh, our partners. Uh, the platform on CBS is uh, pretty – pretty significantly it's broader than CBS uh, uh, Sports Network and so um, and certainly that time it's not like you're playing at you know 12 o'clock at night over in New Jersey uh, you know it's gonna there's gonna be an opportunity to ho highlight our uh, program and also I'm I was excited for our, you know our fans uh, to have a chance to experience that as well Harrison Yes, he's doubtful. He's making great progress. Uh, you know, DeWine's out and Harrison's out. Uh, but, yeah, he, you know, we're, he's making really good progress. And so we're excited about that. Uh, but he will not play this week. Ryan. Craig, obviously, I mean, everyone says when a quarterback's in their second year in system, they're mm -hmm. much different. Can you give us some examples of things you've seen from Pete in sure. camp that get you excited about yeah, we, we do quite a bit of work. We call it pup pass under pressure and decisions to where we're trying to create uh, chaos uh, for a quarterback and, and to, for him to be able to uh, dissect and make calculated decisions to where you want an opponent to blitz. Uh, we've seen more competency uh, as far as um, our pass protections, um, where he's taking the football, how he's handling the football. All those things are important. And our quarterback uh, runs a pro style. We run a pro style system, Ryan. And as a result of that, unlike uh, everybody has a different philosophy on where you put the pressure, some schools, you know, there's not as much pressure on a quarterback and uh, the decision making. And that's quite the opposite. Andrew's been up watching film on his own, I should say, tape on his own a great deal. You know, he's a father, uh, he's mature. Uh, we challenged him to put on some lean muscle mass. He went from like 202 to 216. It looks good. His arms are a little bit stronger, but the biggest thing is his sense of confidence. I don't know if you've interviewed him, if you've seen more of a – he feels good. And uh, as a head coach, that makes me feel good. Come Friday night, I feel a heck of a lot better, you know, because we didn't know what the heck was going to happen in that opening game last year, and it wasn't pretty. And uh, – uh, I think we know our football team better now. Greg, in recent memory, would you compare maybe Texas Tech's offense to maybe what you saw a little bit from BYU last year in Provo? Um, well, certainly what's different is their tempo. You guys are going to find uh, they probably run, if they're not, I think they're the second fastest team in the country with their snaps, maybe the first. And so as a result of that, you're going to see a significant difference on, on that, and that poses problems. It stresses the defense. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I would equate it to BYU. They're, I think that they, uh, you know, they have a lot of weapons. BYU did as well. Uh, but they, they tend to spread the field out a little bit more. I mean, it's from sideline to sideline, and the ball goes all kinds of different places. And I think the, the misunderstanding is you think, okay, it's just going to be uh, basketball, grass, basketball and grass, and that's not the case. They have a very capable running game as well, which poses a problem. Yes, Ryan. Going back to your Nebraska days, do you have any specific memories of Texas Tech, whether that was playing chess against Leach or Bob? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah, I just remember them. I don't know. You went down there. I think they throw tortillas out on the field or something like that. Um, you know, um, for me personally, Ryan, a great deal of respect for Texas Tech. I had an opportunity as a young coach to coach in the Southwest Conference. Uh, Spike Dykes was the head football coach, uh, and they've had all kinds of different offenses and defense. Football is really important to the school. Um, and also uh, just the nature. Um, you know what? I think it's going to be neat. They're coming to the Cowboy State. They have a Western flair as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've got – some fun experiences the first time, uh, you know, we Mike was calling plays and we had four NFL corners and we were able to just to sabotage them. Then the next year was a little bit tougher. So, yeah. I saw you beat him twice at Rice. I was a little shocked to see that. The Rice Owls. Yeah, you got him twice. Yep. 
Is that some disparaging remark with the Rice Owls? Well, I remember asking you specifically how it was going to be to coach during COVID with nobody in the stands. And you said, oh, it would be like Rice. Rice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, once again, I think, uh, uh, you know, that's a, that brings back really great memories for me uh, of Texas Tech. And uh, I, one thing I think that I'm convinced of is Coach McGuire has, uh, he's an old high school coach, which I respect, a uh, very successful high school coach, and has, I think been a great fit from the outside, not knowing him, but know what tech, what resonates with Texas Tech. Uh, that program has a great deal of proud tradition, but they also play with a chip on their shoulders and they take on all comers. And so uh, I think it's a great fit for, for Coach McGuire and I'm excited about uh, coaching against these guys. Yeah, we've mentioned him a couple of times and I, coming out here from Mississippi, I got to meet Coach Leach a couple of times. <laughs> Texas Tech is the second uh, program that Mike Leach has touched to come out here after Washington State. Mm -hmm. You know, as a head coach and really as someone who you know gets to enjoy college football on a deeper level, what is it like going into a season without without Mike? Um, yeah, here's how authentic Mike Leach is, um, or was. Uh, uh, there was no pretense with him. He's brilliant, uh, law school graduate. Um, uh, his his ability to dissect and make things uh, simple was outstanding. His passion, uh, loved the state of Wyoming. Uh, uh, Mike and I were at a Fiesta Bowl event. Maybe this is old hats to some of you. M M Mike and I were at a Fiesta Bowl event, enjoying a couple uh, adult beverages along with a couple other unnamed people. And Mike was passionate that he wanted to talk to the Cowboys the morning that Washington State played us. And I said, you're not going to talk to the Cowboys, Mike. And he goes, no, you don't understand. I got to talk to the Cowboys. And uh, he would send text uh, so proud of how we were doing. He was proud to be a citizen of Wyoming. And if you talk to people in Mississippi or wherever, he would always bring up Wyoming. It was a it was a special place for him. And the thing I have always appreciated about Mike was uh, he was very bright. Uh, he chose his words wisely, and they were always insightful and they were always interesting. And uh, loved him. So yeah. Is it nice to not be coaching against you guys? What's that? Is it nice to not be coaching against you? Yes, I can tell you. Uh, he uh, he would stand over there. Most of these coaches have the big playlist. He did. Hell, I'd look and he's just have this one little sheet. How in the hell does he do all that off this little sheet? You know. So yeah, I got you know. But I, we miss him, and uh, he was great for college football. Craig, you guys have a lot of Texas State on your roster. Mm -hmm. What do you think this game and, and yeah. the loss? Yeah. Um, we're taking one at a time. Yeah. Uh, but this game, the fact that we're playing a team from Texas and a lot of our players have some uh, teammates that are, play for Tech, and uh, some of them may have wanted to have a chance to play uh, at Tech in the Big 12. Uh, we're not afforded that opportunity, so it's an opportunity for them and all their family members. Uh, you know, football in Texas is a big deal. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a big deal here. It is a big deal here. Football in Texas is... A really big deal and so to be on national tv and play against them all their relatives and friends will be watching the game their high school coaches their teammates will be watching the game as well other questions that are out here we got any questions online yeah i think a question for you craig this is paul Ivers with usa today good afternoon good afternoon paul Mm -hmm. As a staff and as a program, when you were basically unable to control your own destiny to a respect, how did you handle it, and, and what was the mood around the team when you knew all you could do is go out and win your games, but you couldn't play one versus two? Mm -hmm. you know, collections of all that Yeah, you know what, I certainly do, because uh, we were undefeated at that time. Uh, we ended up playing uh, Tennessee in the Orange Bowl, and they had Peyton Manning, Peerless Price, and several guys. It was Coach Osborne's last game, and I also – Remember, uh, during the course of the season, uh, the, 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 
tremendous pressure that you felt each week uh, to go out and uh, you knew it, uh, the only way you were going to get in, uh, one to two was uh, on some formula that I think you'd have to, to break in some vault at the CIA to figure the, the damn thing out. Uh, we recognize that each week we needed to be at peak performance. Uh, you looked at point spreads as assistant coaches before you started to substitute. Uh, when I was talking about point spread, I think it was 21 points that a victory had to be. Uh, you knew that each game could have an impact on you falling uh, down or up. And uh, so as a result, uh, every Saturday was so pivotal and so critical. Um, and so, uh, quite frankly, I think we're in a much better place, Paul. Uh, I spent uh, 10 years uh, in the FCS uh, world where the playoffs came about, and I experienced both, both uh, um, you know, run-ups. And in my mind, there's no better way than to have a true uh, playoff system like we do now. And so, um, but I do know that uh, the coaches pull in USA Today had a big, big impact back in those days. And so uh, that, you know, as coaches, they voted. And I can remember the night we beat uh, Tennessee pretty handily and uh, the votes were coming in and Coach Osborne had not voted and it was 11.45. And uh, that vote, I think, pushed us over the top. So that's a little inside story, Paul.